Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to computer science for everyone. And in this video, we're going to be going over um, the assignment that we've just done. So hopefully that went okay, remember, you should not watch this video until you have attempted the assignment on your own. Um, in this video, we're going to be creating the first part of the assignment. Um, so what we want to do is create a Java project. We're going to call it DVD store. We can leave everything as is. Just press finish. And in this project, we're going to be needing three classes. So here's my project. And I'm going to create the three classes. So the first class is going to be uh, DVD. And it is not going to have a main method because a DVD class is simply going to be used to create DVD objects. And a DVD object is meant to store the name of a DVD, the price, and whether it's already been rented or not. So we're not actually going to run the program from this class. The program is going to be run from a different class, and that other class is going to use DVD objects to store information. So we're not going to be running the class from here, and therefore we don't want a main method. There should only be one main method per Java program. So here we have our DVD. Then I'm going to create another class called store. And the same thing applies. The store is going to be storing DVDs. It's going to be containing information about these DVDs, but it's not actually running the program. It's not managing really the whole situation. And therefore, we don't want a main method in here. We want a main method in our last class, which is the actual application controller, application manager. Um, and I'm going to call this one controller. And here, because this is controlling the whole application, and the entry point to the start of the application happens in this class, is why I want a main method. Remember, the main method is where our Java programs start. Okay, so in this video, we're going to create the DVD class. So a DVD doesn't have a main method, and it simply stores some data. It stores the name of the DVD, the um, price for rent, and the um, availability. So the first thing we want to do is create our class variables or instance variables. So here we have three variables. A string variable, which is going to contain for each DVD object, the name, a double variable, which is a floating point variable called cost, that for each DVD is going to contain its cost for rent or its price, and a private Boolean that is going to signal whether the DVD is available or not. Then the th next thing we want is a way to create a DVD Now, we can't have a DVD with no name, no cost, and no availability. Well, technically we could. It would just be a, an empty DVD. But for the sake of this uh, DVD store, we, we can only have DVDs that have name, cost, and a true or false value for whether they're available or not. And therefore, our constructor should only accept these values. So. Um, here uh, I have uh, three variables that are going to be coming into our constructor and when we create a new DVD we're going to tell the program create a new DVD with these three values and um, those three values are then going to get assigned to our three variables. How do we assign them? Um, like so. We want to make the object's name equal to the name that we give in the constructor. So the constructor is going to receive a string and we want that string to go into our object's variable. So what we want to do is we want to make this object's variable equal to the variable in the constructor. So this dot name equals name. Now here's a tiny bit of convention that we haven't talked about before but it's very interesting. See how this name turns blue just like this one but this one doesn't. 
it stays black. This dot name refers to the class or instance variable because it belongs to this object um, when we create one. So this object's name is this one because it is accessible from the whole object. It belongs inside these two brackets. This name over here belongs inside these two brackets. It's not an object variable and therefore it stays black. So what we're doing here is giving the name that we get as a parameter to this object's name. And the convention actually is to write it like this. Before I've been giving it different names for these variables and then just assigning it. But um, I thought I should introduce this bit of, uh, of convention here uh, for your um, knowledge. So we assign this name equal to name and then this dot cost equal to cost and this dot available equal to available. And what this does is simply um, and of course this has to be a double. What it does is it gets these three values and it's and it puts them into these three variables. That's the whole thing that this constructor does, and that's because we can't have a DVD without a name, a cost, or an availability. Next thing we want to do is we want to create the getters and setters. Essentially, they're going to let us access these private variables, and we've discussed why we want this before. Um, we don't want public variables because they are too visible, and we can change them around and do things like that. Um, what we want to be able to do is get the values of these variables without actually having access to the variable itself. And the way we do that is with the getters and setters, the accessors and the mutators, they're the same thing. So let's create the accessors, the getters. And the same thing applies here. Although this is not necessary, we can delete it and the variable will still be blue. The convention is to put it in so that we simply know from looking at it that this dot name refers to the class variable. So notice how the boolean method is is available and not get available. Because for Boolean, it makes sense logically in English to ask, is available, yes or no, true or false. Uh, whereas for the other ones, we actually want to get the value. In this method, we simply know whether it is available or not. Um, so it, this is simply because in English, it makes sense to call it is available and not get available. And then, usually for DVDs, we wouldn't be changing the names but we could change their cost. So let's create a, ver uh, a method that will change the cost of the DVD for rent. So we create a, ver a variable, uh, sorry, a method called set cost that's going to change the cost of the DVD. And we give it the new cost that we want to, to make the DVD um, be rented at. And once again, this cost, the one for this object, is equal to cost the variable that is the parameter. And similarly, we can create a method called rent, and what this does is it sets um, this available to false. We've rented the DVD, so now the availability is false. And obviously we can't call our method return because it's a keyword. So return DVD will have to do this available equal to true. So we've returned the DVD and now it's available uh, because we set the availability to true. And this is everything that we would need in our DVD store. Um, one too many. Essentially this DVD now has the the ability to store name, cost, and availability for a DVD. It lets us get its name and its cost, and whether it is available or not, lets us change its cost and change uh, and basically rent it or return it, and this change the availability of it. An important thing to notice is that remember how everything has to be in between these two curly braces because they comprise the Java class. 
Instance variables are not inside a method, they are not declared in any method, and therefore these variables have a scope, they are alive inside the whole class. Any method can access them. If you declare a variable, like here, inside a method, it is only available in that method. After we get to the end of the method, string name dies and is no longer with us. This dot name, however, although it shares the same name, is still alive because it's a class variable. So that's why we want to declare these variables outside any method. In the constructor, we assign the three variables initially, and then we can get the values and set the values. Every method, of course, is not defined inside any other method. Uh, we don't put this inside here, um, because a method cannot be declared inside a method. So we close the constructor, and then we declare the next method, and we close it, and we declare the next one, and so on. All these methods are public so that our store can then use them. And this is it. This is the DVD class. In the next video, we're going to be creating the store class, which is going to let us use the DVDs for different things and create lists of DVDs and things like that. So I'll see you in the very next video.